Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Quick Expert Reviews. The full review of the Xperia 1 is with us now. So let's start with the unboxing. Now this is a proper retail box, which means whatever you see in here, this is what you get in the box, at least in the UK market. Um, so apart from the phone itself, we obviously do also have a quick start guide, if I remember correctly. Yes, a startup guide to show you where to put the SIM card, memory card tray and so on. Then we have a proper charger as well. By proper, I mean it's a USB power delivery charger with 18 watts of output. So it does charge the device pretty fast. It is a Type-C to Type-C charger as well. So then we've got the headphones, usual MH750s. If you'd like to, you can have a conversation through these headphones as well, because they do support a microphone themselves. So yes, that's all supported, which is always a nice touch. Then we've got a Type-C to Type-C cable. So it's USB Type-C charger to the USB Type-C in the phone. And last but not least, we've got the headphone jack. Um, so yeah, Type-C to 3.5mm jack. Then we've got the beautiful Xperia 1 in black color. Now what's brilliant about the handset itself, you do get a glass on the back, but it's not a fingerprint magnet as like, for example, the P30 Pro or the S10. It actually is pretty nice and it doesn't leave any smudges. Triple lens camera setup, which I'll touch on later on. A power button, a separate fingerprint sensor button on the side. Volume up, volume down and the SIM tray with a memory card tray on the top. Phone supports up to one terabyte in terms of memory cards and you can slide in your nano SIM card on top as well. The phone itself has 128 gig of internal storage and 6 gigabytes of RAM. Then we've got the beautiful 6.5 inch OLED panel with a 4K resolution and the front facing camera plus the um, first stereo speaker. And then we've got the Type-C and a second speaker on the bottom, plus the second microphone as well. So let's start, as usual, with looking into what the phone is running on. And as far as I'm... It usually... The, the software updates and the security patches came two weeks after the Google Pixel, so that's always a nice addition. Now, I do apologize that the review will be so long, it is 14 minutes long, but I've tried to cover every single aspect of the phone, especially some of the unique features that you won't find on the S10 Plus or the P30 Pro, which are the, in my opinion, direct competitors to the Xperia 1. Um, so we start with Side Sense, which is like a shortcut menu, shortcut um, option on the handset itself. It also helps you with multitasking as well. So. As you can see on the bottom, you've got one button to go back and you've got the home button. So if you want to trigger multi-window menu, you can either use side sense or you can change to the standard uh, navigation bar, which is back, home and resense, and then um, use it to trigger the multitasking window where you can use two apps simultaneously. Um, Apart from that, we do have gestures. So we've got the gestures to uh, lift up the phone and answer. We've got the ambient display. Now what's cool with the Sony ambient display, always on display, is that when you play a tune, it also shows you the Spotify album constantly. If you don't play a tune, you can set up a photo if you'd like to as well. Any photo you'd like. In terms of the Xperia Assist, you've got the battery care, which Let's say you go to bed and you wake up at 8 o'clock and you leave the phone on charge. It's going to charge very slowly up to 7 o'clock and then it's up to 90%. And then it's going to top up the extra 10% before um, your alarm, which prolongs the battery life. And while we are on the subject of the battery life, the battery itself, OMG, this for this beast doesn't die it just doesn't die i know it's 33 milli um 3300 milliampere hour battery but it just won't die i mean without gaming uh when i've used the phone for like phone calls text messages social media youtube it lasted two days which is very unlikely nowadays in terms of some cool features, you've got Dolby Atmos, which we will have a listen to in a second, how it sounds. 
but if you'd like to, you can set it up to your liking. You can set up, uh, you've got some prerequisites, but you can also predefined uh, options, but you can also set it up to your own liking. Um, let me tell you, the phone sounds amazing, like literally amazing. This place doesn't feel right. What are you talking about? So yeah, then we've got the DSE HX, which basically tries to upscale your low resolution MP3 files into higher resolution MP3 files. It's not an equivalent of a high res FLAC file, for example, or OGG, but it does a pretty decent job. It's not something new to the Xperia handsets. It's been with Xperia handsets since, if I believe correctly, XZ, X, sorry, Z3 but it does a pretty decent job. Then we've got the connection preference, so you've got the standard features like custom screen mirroring, but you also have a native DualShock 4 support, which works brilliantly, not only with Android games, but also apps like Steam Link or Moonlight, which allow you to stream um, games onto your phone, which I'll touch on later on. In terms of the display itself, you've got the standard mode and you've got the creator mode. So with the creator mode, it turns into an HDR, together with B2020 um, compatible content. So if you play something on Netflix, for example, it looks absolutely gorgeous, If you, as you've probably seen uh, in the audio bit of the video. And I, I just can't express how amazing the video quality is on this phone. It's just, it feels like it's just made for watching content on it. It's such a powerhouse. It's unbelievable. Now, I do really like Sony handsets. However, I did admit in the Xperia Z3, uh, XZ3 um, video review that they do lack in the camera department. Sometimes the video quality might not be the best, but this is absolutely out of this world. I do apologize if I do sound overly excited, but this phone is actually very exciting to use. I haven't been so excited with a handset since, I don't know, Huawei P20 Pro, I believe, last year, which was also an amazing value for money. Going back to the special features, we've got a game enhancer, which basically allows us um, to record videos while we play them and, stream, uh, and then upload them. On top of that, it also helps us with uh, game performance so we can go with for example focus settings we can set up focus settings to help us release ram i mean you get six gigabytes of ram but if you need to release it you are more than welcome to the the games run absolutely buttery smooth on it the game enhancer icon stays there so if you want to get rid of it you can turn off the game enhancer however it's a really nice hub to keep all your games you can set a performance of every single game separately or you can do like a one global setting and like I did mention when you record your gameplay you can also use the front-facing camera so if you're planning on posting something on Twitch or I don't know YouTube not YouTube gaming unfortunately anymore that doesn't exist you are more welcome to do so with the handset itself um, like I said, PUBG Mobile supports 21 by 9 ratio, so whatever you throw at it, Kingdoms, New Lands, I will do a separate video on the gaming performance of the phone and how 21 by 9 games uh, work. I did a similar video with 21 by 9 Xperia 10, but not many games supported the ratio back then, now it's a bit more. Um, then what we've got in here is we also have a special app that supports your DSLR camera. So if you'd like to, you can use that app as a remote viewfinder, for example, and for your settings and everything. Yes, there are quite a lot of features built into this handset. So 
Uh, I've covered the Cinema Pro in separate video. You've probably watched it. If not, I highly encourage you to. Then we've got the built-in 3D Creator, which again isn't something new on the Sony handsets, but now it also allows you to do the 3D scan of your face using the front-facing camera. So you can use the both front-facing and a rear-facing camera if you'd like to. <clears throat> then if you'd like to, you can obviously send that to be printed. You can use uh, an app to animate your face, your head. You can actually order a 3D print of your head if you like to. You can even order your head as a Christmas bubble or a magnet for your fridge. On top of that, you can use an app called Shadow, which will then use your head to make a music video with you dancing. Re the, you can choose your costume, you can choose your own tune. And what's pretty popular nowadays is memes. So if you'd like to, you can choose a meme, uh, GIF uh, file meme, and then use your head on it. So you just press which one, which meme we want. We want to take Picard, uh, face palm, and you can nicely do it. It looks daft, but it is hell of a funny. I've really enjoyed using that. Uh, it sounds daunting, you don't have to use it, but if you want to, it's there for you. Um, so yeah, that's me being daft over here. And then let's have a look at the actual proper camera. So that is a separate camera app to the uh, Cinema Pro app. Um, so this is your standard Sony camera app. So you've got the three 12 megapixel cameras, lenses in here. You've got an f-stop 1.6 wide, f-stop 2.4 um, telephoto for your uh, bokeh mode and then you've got the ultra wide which is f-stop 2.2 the third lens obviously the picture samples will be at the very end of the video unfortunately the phone does not record in 4k at 60 frames per second which is a bit of a weird choice considering that the snapdragon 855 is more than capable of doing that which has been proven on the mi 9 uh, but it is what it is. At least you can record not only in 4K HDR, but you can also record super slow motion at 960 frames per second um, in full HD. So not only 720p, but full HD, which again uh, makes the Sony XZ3 and the X1 the only handsets that are capable of doing that. Um, overall experience with the camera, there's not much new in here. Um, you've got the separate modes for the bokeh mode, the, you've got the separate modes for a manual mode, which I will cover in a second as well. You can take the pictures in 4x9, 21x9 and 16x9, uh, 4x3, 16x9 and 21x9 as well. Um, then there is also a very unique feature which is called eye out of focus, eye tracking focus. So basically I'll sh demonstrate that in a second um, using a picture of a face. So it not only works on uh, actual human beings, but it also works on pictures. And I'll show you that in a second. Um, but going back with to the modes themselves, we've got, like I said, a portrait selfie, which blurs the background. We've got the super slow-mo, uh, which I've covered as well. And in here you can choose if you want to take a one shot of a super slow-mo or do, if you want to record a slow motion video and then add additional super slow-mo bit in it and then um, uh, carry on with a normal video. Then we've got a manual mode. So you can adjust the autofocus, the manual focus, the um, ISO value up to 3200 as opposed to 800 in Cinema Pro. You can adjust the shutter speed, you can adjust the white balance and the exposure value as well. Then we've got the creative mode if you want to put any um, additional filters while you're taking a picture. But obviously you also have a, in gallery, you can, uh, Sony Album, sorry, you can use the built-in filters as well. And then, yes, let me show you the eye focus. So when I focus on that picture, it will catch an eye over there in a second. Voila, here we go. Let me just pull the phone. Yep, as, as you can see, when I'm moving the phone, it is tracking the object itself as well. So pretty convenient, pretty handy. Um, so if the object is moving with its eyes open, it will keep it in focus. Quite a mind-blowing technology, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, one last thing I wanted to cover is that multitasking video uh, mode. So like I said, you can either use the side sense or you can use, change the navigation bar to a normal one. 
So yeah, hope you've enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions, please drop, please drop them in the comments. There is additional video coming about the Filmic Pro uh, being used on this handset because yes, this handset does support Filmic Pro. So yeah, have a lovely day guys. Take care. Bye.